Okay, I'm going to continue my interview series, and this time I'm doing Amanda Pua Walsh. And my well, first of all, welcome and thank you for for joining me. Oh, Vic, thank you so much for having me. I'm honored. Okay, so thank you. Um, I'm going to start by saying most of the interviews that I've done have been of astrologers. Now, would you say that you're not an astrologer? I would say I am not an astrologer. <laughs> so what's your, what's your participation in the astrology world? What do you do? I own Astrology Hub, which is a company, an online company that create, has created a platform for astrologers. So we bring together, in my opinion, the world's best astrologers, and we offer courses and events. Um, so I'm, I'm like the, I'm a cheerleader or a promoter of astrology. Cool. How did you wind up doing that and why? Why did you, most people, when they get really into astrology, they're like, oh, I want to do this. <laughs> That's such a good question. It's never been my impulse. My impulse has never been, oh, I want to do this. My impulse has always been, oh, I want to share this. Hmm. Because it was so helpful for me. And um, I don't know, maybe I, I know my limitations or something, but it, to me, the, the astrologer mind is so amazing. And it's, it's almost like how I, trying to learn astrology for me is sometimes how I felt when I was in calculus in college, hmm. where it's just like, oh my God, I, this is, it's, com it's complicated and it's amazing. And so I'm so um, in awe of astrologers and the ability to really decode that language. And yeah, so for me, it's always been, how do I, how do I help? more people know about this how do i help astrologers get their message out because it's it is it can be such a helpful tool for people yeah when did you start doing that astrology hub is about four years old so mm. four years ago I, I only had my first reading about six years ago so for me before that i didn't really know much about astrology at all i mean it was really like limited to the the horoscopes in the back of Vogue or wherever I was looking right. at them, I didn't even give it the time of day. But then I had my first reading and was just completely blown away. And then astrology really became a lifeline for me as I went into what I call now a serious, prolonged dark night of the soul. Hmm. It really just became this lifeline for me. And the more I learned about it, the more amazed and impressed I was by hmm. it. Is there anything about that first reading that you would want to share with us? That... It was Natasha Alter on the Big Island. She's an evolutionary astrologer. She's amazing. She has become like my soul sister at this point. What was amazing to me was that with limited information, she knew more about me and my soul and my family and like things that I couldn't even verbalize than anyone in my life at the time. You know, she was able to have this window into my soul that just um, was astounding to me. And I, I had 13 years of Catholic school and it never really resonated for me. I always was like, ah, really? It just, it just didn't land, you know, but yeah. this one reading and what she was able to see from my chart for me is the first time I remember feeling like there was evidence of God. Hmm. Because if there was something so intelligent that could design this blueprint and that, you know, all the things that had unfolded in my life had, had in some ways, I, I don't want to say been planned, but had a purpose. It, um, it really was like for me, wow, there's something much bigger than me. And I always sort of knew that, but it was, again, it was like that evidence. There's something much bigger than me and it is so intelligent and beyond my wildest understandings um that that must be god you know quote unquote yeah. god yeah well that reminds me of one of the questions i wanted to ask you later on so you said you went to 13 years of catholic school yeah i started in kindergarten and i went all the way through high school wow so i guess you were raised catholic yes i i had my first communion i was baptized i had confirmation i did all the the catholic Thanks. But what about these days? Will you identify yourself as Christian or Catholic or what? What would it be? Definitely not. Mm. I would not put a label on it. Um, I, ooh, that's such a good question. 
it's funny because I feel like I'm, I'm like raising pagan kids. Yeah. <laughs> they, they go to the Waldorf school and we were actually looking into a Christian school here on Maui as an, op, as an option. And um, it just, it, it isn't, it, it does not line up with the way that I see things. Mm. Um, I feel like there's many paths to God and that it's all like beautiful and perfect. Um, so no, I would definitely call myself a very spiritual person, but not a religious person. Uh-huh. Great. So let's see what other question I have for you. Okay. I, gotta look at my, I got too into the actual conversation. I forgot my line of questions. <laughs> so I think uh, you kind of covered yeah. like, you know, what it is that you do, how you got into it. So, hmm. Let me ask you this. What is what do you think is the most awesome thing about astrology? And then on the converse side, what do you think is the most disconcerting thing about astrology? Mm. The most awesome thing that I witness every day in our community is that connection. Well, that word connection, actually. What I see is that astrology helps people connect with themselves and the beauty of their authenticity, you know, who they actually are. I see it bringing people together with a common language that seems to transcend a lot of the r- religious conversation. You know, it's, it's like, it's a, it's a conversation that becomes spiritual, but it's, it does, it's, it's inclusive. It's inclusive for who you are and who you're designed to be. So the connection to self, the connection to others, and then the connection to nature. I mean, to me, it was like this moment, this epiphany of like, oh, wow, the universe is also nature. You know, I'd always thought of nature as like the earth and the flowers and the trees. And I hadn't really, I hadn't really been inclusive with the universe. And I had this moment, I don't know when it was, but it was like, oh, it's just, it's nature too. So there's this ability to connect that I think brings a richness to life. And what I see is that people connect, and this happened for me too, there's this connection to the kind of magic that I believed in when I was a child that I knew was real, that I knew was real, but that the world kind of beat out of me in a lot lot of ways. Um, So there's magic and there's richness. You know, I remember when I started to, to get into astrology, there was a dimension, there was a new dimension to life. You know, life had kind of felt flat and and all of a sudden it was like, wow, there's so many dimensions. There, it's, it's alive, you know? And so that in that aliveness, it permeates everything. So what I see is people become alive. They become passionate. They become um, childlike and reconnecting with their innocence and, and okay with who they are. Not only okay, but celebrating who they are because there's such a beautiful design to who they are. Mm. So, and it's unique, you know, it's, there's no one else exactly like them. So what I see as like a potential peril or pitfall is yeah. um, the fear that can, that can be kind of slung around. And, and I see that and it's, I feel very protective of our community because, and, and it's one of the reasons why I choose astrologers like you, Vic, is it's choosing the astrologers that have a message that is empowering that, that helps people understand that we are not victims to the energies and the things that we are actually in a co-creative dance or relationship. And so, but I have seen, you know, people sort of um, put, okay, there's several things. There's, there's the putting all of the power into an astrologer and saying, tell me about my future. Tell me about myself. Mm. Uh, I think that there's some risk in that there's, the fear that can happen with, you know, oh no, this big transit's coming. What's going to happen to me? You know, and that, and that, I think it's a pretty natural reaction to think that it could be something bad. It, it takes a really skilled coach and guide, which so many astrologers are, that can help you realize, no, this is an opportunity. This is a chance for you to, to really, um, you know, break free from something and move into a new dimension of yourself. Um, so that's, that's what I've seen for the most part. Can I part. ask you, can we explore that a little bit? Yeah. Let's say if I put all of my trust or something, if I put everything onto the astrologer and I say, tell me who I am, tell me 
what I should do. What's the risk? Disempowerment. I think people stop listening to themselves. They stop trusting their intuition. They stop, um, you know, and there's a dependency that, that, that happens. And it's like, oh my God, I can't even make a decision without consulting my astrologer. Yeah. Um, I just think it's disempowering. I, and I think that any astrologer who really wants to take that position, there's, there is the risk of that abuse of power, which is so easy. You know, yeah. so anyone who's holding the answers or holding the keys, it's, it's very easy to go into that role where there's, there's a lot of power in that. You know, and I think that's what's been so distasteful for me about a lot of the religions is, is that, mm -hmm. that, that human part that happens or can happen. You know, I think most of the teachings of most religions are amazing and pure and beautiful. It's when the human part comes in that I feel like there's the, the questionable, you know, so, all the rules that get created and, and things like that. So it's yeah. like a parallel to, say, to saying... Uh, Mr. Priest or whatever, tell me what, who is God? Tell me what to do. This is, this totally. is parallel. Tell me what I need to do to be a good person. You yeah. know, tell me who I, who, what I can't do to be a good person. Yeah. And what I you think. had on the other side, sorry, but this is interesting. Somehow we connect conversation is stimulating my head, but um, it's interesting because what you said on the positive side of astrology was how it's like a co you realize that you're in this co-creative dance with the universe. So, it seems to me like the negative side is you, you get rid of that whole co-creative thing and you think that the whole universe is somebody's going to do something to you. Somebody's yes. going to tell you something. So. Yes. Yes. It's, it's to me, it's a victim consciousness that um, is again, it's just that word disempowering. It's you feel powerless, you feel out of control, you feel, and I'm not saying we can control everything either. You know, right. I, that's why I use the word co-creative because I don't think, that we're the ones controlling the whole reality either right. but you have an influence we yeah. do have influence. so yeah How about the other example you gave where there's a transit coming and i'm totally scared of it and i say what's going to happen to me in this transit what's wrong with that i think that we can end up living in fear i think we can end up um being like it takes us out of the present it takes us out of the ability to make choices um, it doesn't, to me, that's the opposite of, of being like vital and alive because there's this like, you know, like something's going to fall out of the sky and hit us on the head. It's like, there's this living in almost like a fight or flight sort of mode versus, okay, this energy is coming and um, it, there could be intensity involved in that, but how it's going to manifest and where it's going to manifest in my life and how I respond to it is completely that's that's the game you know that's like mm. that's the fun of it it's like okay this energy is coming and like what can i do to take care of myself and be ready for for anything that might come up but not be afraid of it yeah i like it's, that it's, it's tricky i mean i like it's your tricky. choice of words i like your choice of words where you said that's the game yeah that is the game that's really a great choice of words that's and that's the fun part it's going to have, something's going to, some dice is going to roll or something, but now you decide what direction to move your piece or something. Exactly. Great. Yeah. Great. Let's see what my fifth question is. Do you see the sun starting to like totally, <laughs> this is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look bad though. Cause like you get whited out on one side, but the other side is definition. Okay, good. All yeah. Right. <laughs> um, let me see. Yeah. Okay. So similar to, that previous question, which is like about astrology, what's the positive, most positive and negative thing about astrology? How about the, because you would really know this because you run a community and you're really in touch with other communities in the bigger, your community within a bigger community and all that. So how about, let's talk about the astrological community as it exists today. What do you think is the real, yay, it's finally like this, or yay, it's like this thing that, you, for you and also it's like oh i wish it wasn't like this what are those two sides of the coin okay well so you, you remember i'm like relatively i'm relatively new to the astrology community so i don't have years and years of grievances about the way things are i actually have been amazed that like when i when i had that first reading i thought all astrology was like that 
I thought all astrology was really like soul based and and transcend you know that had that like transcendent spiritual experience i didn't even realize there was other kinds of astrology i thought that's what astrology was mm. the yay about what's happening right now to me is that people are finding again they're finding purpose they're finding meaning they're finding each other they're finding um it's interesting because astrology is like the study of how in, some, in a lot of ways it's like how we're different from each other, mm. but then there's always like this common thread of, of, of who we are underneath all of it. Um, the hardest thing for me when I started to realize, like get into the astrological community and, and get oriented with it, the hardest thing for me was you're right, I'm right, you're wrong, this is right, this is wrong, like mm. that part. And I was never a part of that because because I, because I didn't, I don't really care. It's kind of like the religious thing for me. It's like, what works for you? What's useful for you? What do you, what do you, what empowers you? What uplifts you? And that is going to be different for so many different people. That's why we have astrology hub. I love to offer so many different astrologers and types of astrology because there are so many different people out there and different things resonate with different people. And I love seeing that in our community. Like Vic, when you come on, it's like, oh, Vic Takara, I love him. Oh my God, he's speaking to my soul. And you hear that happen. And then someone else will be completely enamored with Carol Ferris or you know, someone else. So it's, it's, it's really beautiful to watch that happening. And I've always had this theory that, that people are coded to different people mm. to unlock certain things within them. You know, so like someone will say something that is just like that perfect thing you needed to hear at that perfect time. And, and something happens where you're, where something in you is unlocked, like what happened for me with Natasha in that first reading. Um, so what, what was hard for me was to get into it and realize there was a lot of, and I don't want to say a lot, maybe it's a tiny percentage. I have no idea. But um, there was like infighting, you know, within. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, don't, you guys don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. Astrology is just amazing. Let's just share that, you know? And like, no one has to be right or wrong. It's, it's all good, you know? Um, so that, that's been my experience. It's kind of like when I first started getting into like healthy food. And there was like a, a really simple explanation for me that someone, that, you know, I read a book and it was like, eat more close to nature and like, eat less processed things. I was like, oh, that makes sense. You know, it was like this moment of, but then once you go deeper into the health industry and arena and all the information, it's like so much conflicting information that you sort of lose the plot. Right. And to me, the plot around astrology, the bigger picture of, hey, we're all connected. Hey, we're a part of this universe. Hey, we have a role to play. Hey, you matter. That's to me what's, what's the interesting part of the conversation. And so all the detaily things to me, it's like, well, you know, I don't know. Who knows which way is right, which way is wrong. But, um, but if we can stay at that level of like, how does this help? How is this useful? That to me is more interesting. I'll just People say watching this video right now, are, like half of them are probably laughing right now. Why? Because I'm like the center of this, of like all these arguments, the right and wrong <laughs> arguments. <laughs> Because I'm the guy who does this um, tropical Vedic astrology. So like, but the thing with me is I just did it. I didn't go yeah. out and tell other people they were wrong. I just did it this way. And then, but then people came. They get mad. Because yeah, it's mad different. me. And like, then when you defend yourself, they, then it looks like you're attacking. It. Right. Yeah. I love that. That's what I've loved about you from the very beginning is that um, you solve a problem of a particular infight that I think is really useful because you're not saying this one's right or this one's wrong. You're saying we can work with both, which to me is like, ah, oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what else we got. We have now, I'm going to move you into some philosoph more philosophical questions. Okay. Right. So we already talked about religious background and how you're, you're a very spiritual person, but you can't really um, sign up on any particular religious group. Yeah. Now, let me just ask you a purely philosophical question. What is, and I like to put it this way, when I wake up in the morning, why? Why do I, why should I wake up? What's, what am I supposed to do that day and every day? And what's the point of waking up and being alive? Hmm. 
Gosh, I want to start with my kids. Um, not, I just, I asked them this question recently. I said, what do you think the point of life is? And I loved this because my daughter, Madeline, who is Libra, Sun, Gemini, Moon, Scorpio, Rising, Scorpio, Venus, like just really deep, wise, like soul is like the, the purpose of life is to express myself. Oh. I asked my daughter, Sophia, who's seven and has tons of Sag in her chart. I mean, she's like the poster child for Sagittarius. And she's like, the purpose of life is to have fun and to share it with others. And I was like, oh, it's so awesome. I mean, for me, there is, I love learning, I love growing, and I, 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 I have um, a serious curiosity. And there's always, and like that game thing I said, like I think of this as a game. And it's like, okay, like what else can I learn? How else can I do this so that it's fun? <laughs> There's such a fulfillment in that, like even, even running my business, even running the team, even in my romantic relationship, you know, all of it, it's always like, yeah, how can I get better? Like, what else can I do? What else can I learn so that this can be even better than what it was? So there's something really fun for me about that. It's like, it's like just the unfolding, like the unfolding of me, of life that is worth living for. That's a great answer. I'm not even going to ask you a follow-up question because that's great. Okay. Okay, now, so here's another question. Um, I find modern people, I don't know, because I'm teleporting into, I, I also make a joke that like I teleported into this time frame from like a different time frame because my uh -huh. mindset is very not modern, but yet here I am. I often find that modern people, they have, uh, they're really kind of, afraid of saying something is good or bad or right or wrong. So I wanted to ask you how you feel about that and if you could give us a shot at a definition of what's the difference between good and bad and right, good and bad on one hand or right and wrong as another polarity. Wow, it's such an interesting question. And Vic, honestly, I'm in a process of being less black and white. Like I used to be more black and white, like there is, like I could, I would see things that way. I don't know if this is the Aries South node, Libra North node kind of manifestation, but um, oh, is there right or wrong? Yeah, yeah. Just like there's dark and light. Just there, like there's night and day. I think, I think. Oh wow. Actually, I'm having a really hard time answering that question. So there is right and wrong, because there's like night and day, black, and, but but it's not as black and white as you used to see it. Yeah, it's not as simple as I used to see it. Uh -huh. I used yeah. to see it like in really simple terms. I don't. How did you used to see it. Kind of like with the religious programming I had, there was, and with the. Saturnian guilt laid all over it. <laughs> There's like should and should not. Um, and a lot of like guilt about, you know, if I wasn't, it was kind of like that feeling like there's that guy in the sky judging my every movement, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and even if I didn't totally buy into that, it was always sort of there, you know? Yeah. Um, that, that concept of God as being like very judgmental about my behavior and about who I was. Right. So that again, like a lot of that has really fallen away, but to replace it, eek. I don't know. I, I bet you this is going to be the kind of thing that I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about going, ah, oh, that's what I should have said. That's what I really think. But I actually don't like have a ready answer for that question right now. Well, that's good. Then we can talk about this more in some future point, but, um, um, well, well oh, so, the, so, so. Good or, the, and the good or bad one too, like, I think, yeah, it's been hard for me to get to a point where like, there actually might be 
bad people or there might be like um you know forces that how about this life generating and life destroying nice that actually feels better to me than like good or bad like yeah. there are things there are behaviors there are activities that are life generating yeah and there's ones that are life deteriorating great and that to me makes more sense than any of the other um categorization i like that and if you put that with your with the previous question about you know what's the point of life as you know like things which help a person feel that they can express yes themselves to yes. share and have fun and be alive and share the joy of existing that's what's yes. life generating yes that's good and then yeah and i think also there's for me for me there's also this issue of this whether it's self-centered or not self-centered because fun can also become just a really harmful thing actually yes yeah but i like how your daughter says just sharing this fun with other people so she's got yeah. like i feel like she really gets it yes yeah okay yes. great we got it we got a good one there <laughs> you, had to, you had to like eke it out of me but <laughs> and also i liked how you you were getting around on the point that there's good and bad and everything but it doesn't mean you have to be so goddamn judgmental about it right right yeah yes i don't know yeah it's 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 tough to yeah we can just move on <laughs> <laughs> no I, I and the other thing that you brought up here was about how, this judgmental god concept so that's one of the questions that I had on my list of things I wanted to ask you is, do you believe in God? I know you do because you mentioned it earlier, but what's your concept? Is it, it obviously, you know, now we can rule out the one that he's not the guy who's got a lightning bolt that smites you for right. doing something that thou shalt not do. But what is yeah. your concept? It's, this is hilarious. I mean, it's, it's almost like we need to have the camera in all these conversations I have with my daughters because we talk about this a lot and um you know my daughter madeline is like i don't think it's a him or her i think it's just an energy and you know because because they're very sensitive to and i remember being this way too to this concept of god being a him like there was always i was always kind of like as a woman i sort of felt like left out or like lower class or something yeah. I, I i now have different feelings about the you know if it's a masculine principle or if it's a feminine principle or you know <sighs> Vic I really don't know I really don't know but I know when I have experiences of God when there's those experiences that are so expansive and so beautiful and so loving so that's all I can think of when I think of God is that it's that mm. And I have those, those fleeting experiences where it's just like so palpable and real. And, and it's like, oh, that feels like an experience of God. Yeah. It's like when I get chills all over my body and t tears fill my eyes. Um, and so often that happens when in like really simple moments, you know, and just being in nature, like at the ocean, at the sunrise, or being with my girls as I watch the beauty of like this childhood innocence and the, the joy that comes from them. So. Yeah. Well, these are really good answers. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. This is I the other like thing that I like about philosophy too is because I, when I, I've always loved philosophy. Then I went to university, which was a joke. The way I went to university was a joke because like I went to like a polytechnic university and then majored in music. <laughs> <laughs> then I switched my major to philosophy. Then I, when I was in philosophy, I uh, the first philosophical class I was in, I was like, this is the most unsatisfying thing I've ever experienced in my life. Because these people are just, first of all, what's wrong with the first philosophy? Why are we going to study the second philosopher? The first guy's got a really great idea. Why don't we get more? That was bothering me. But the second thing was, these guys that are like philosophers, they don't really understand life that much better than just regular people and kids and things and so mm -hmm. as i grew up, um as i grew up i realized like you like you just said like just getting more in touch with the sun or the ocean or the wind or the trees or a child especially a child because they haven't gotten so complicated yet they're more right. like nature yes that totally i get more philosophical information from them than i did from these complicated thinkers Totally. And it's, you know, it's actually part of the astrology piece too, is 
when I was talking about losing the forest for the trees, you know, in, in, in the complication, um, it's similar for me. It's like, does it help us live a better life? Like, does it help us be more alive and more who we are and more loving and more giving and, um, and less inhibited about, you know, ourselves, then it's amazing. Yeah. But if it's really, again, if it's like what you're talking about, like the philosophy thing, like what have like there's an elitism that can happen. You know, it's yeah. like, well, you know, we know all this and, you know, it's like, yeah, but is it helping, I you see. know? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so the sun, the sun on you reached its epic height just now. Now it's back <laughs> down to normal. So let's <laughs> wrap it up. Okay. I want to, I, to wrap this up, I had thought of an interesting way to wrap it up because I asked you a bunch of questions that are kind of like about what you're doing with astrology. And then I asked you a bunch of questions about philosophy. So you mentioned things about how the divine is really experienced in fundamental basic things that are right there in front of your face all the time. And you mentioned about how good and bad and right and wrong is really about the chance to experience and share life. How do those principles relate to your experience with, of astrology or how does astrology help you ex experience those things? It is those things. I mean, again, like it is those things because it gives people permission to live, to unfold, to actually fall in love with themselves as they're unfolding. Because one of the things that's so cool is with every different astrology tool or technique, it's another way to look at yourself, another way to understand yourself, and then another way to understand the people in your life. So that it, to me, it facilitates life. It really enables people, like, and I use that word connection again, but it enables people to connect with something bigger, to connect with themselves in a bigger way. It's like, you're so special, but you're not special because everyone's special, you know, mm. but you really are special too. So it's like both, you know? Um, so to me, it, it, that's why I love it. That's why I can get behind it. That's why I wake up every day excited to share it with the, anyone who wants to learn about it. You know, I, I definitely, it's not like everyone needs to learn astrology. No, but um, you know, for certain people, it really holds so much, um, and it, it facilitates life. Hmm. I definitely see that. And when I, the things I don't like about astrology is those things that seem to block the expression of life. You know, because you get constricted with the fear, you no longer can just like, like be in that, um, it's hard to breathe when you're in that place. It's hard to be when you're in that place. It's hard to like see the beauty when you're in that place. Hmm. So. So it has both. It's not all, you know, perfect. And every person chooses how they're going to engage with the astrology. Um, but yeah, to me, it is, it is a way to experience God and life. Yeah. This was a great interview. I'm so glad. Thank you. <laughs> Do you want to wrap up? Do you want to tell my audience anything like that's going on with Astrology Hub? Sure. Uh, we have a podcast. Yeah. We have a new podcast. It's called the Astrology Hub Podcast. So if you have a podcast player, you can check it out. Um, we have an awesome membership with astrologers like Vic Dakara, who is one of our um, guides. It's called the Inner Circle. If you want to check that out, you could go to astrologyhub.com. But I recommend the podcast because um, we do a weekly forecast on Mondays. And then again, the, the messaging, though, is not like, oh, the world's going to fall apart on Friday. Watch out. It's like, okay, there's some intensity coming. Like, how are we going to work with this? Um, and we really keep it in a, in a dialogue. So there's a discussion around it. You mm. know, so you're not just like hearing the information on your own and then kind of going into that fear place, which is easy to do sometimes. Um, and, then on, and then I interview amazing astrologers and spiritual guides and things. It's all about giving you practical wisdom so that you can live your life with purpose. Yeah. And using astrology as a tool for that. I should have known that this interview would be good because you're a really good interviewer. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And I, every time I'm in, a, I'm in a, well, I don't know what we would call it, like a session or something with you, you like great moderator. Everything flows really good. 
So thank I you. I, it's 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 the curiosity. It's like <laughs> I'm so curious about all of you, and so I'm I am ready with questions all the time. Fantastic. <laughs> and I've had so much fun with you too, Vic. Every single time we have these sessions, it's like, ooh, fun. We're yeah. gonna talk about cool stuff. And yeah. your 2019 forecast, literally, for whatever reason, it was the 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 key that unlocked a lot of things for me for 2019. So a lot of like words you said and imagery you gave, especially like the lioness. Yeah. Um, it's and even when you said this year, it's not about being a victim. It's not about waiting to be rescued. Like this is your turn to like step up and own it and be it. Yeah. So. I don't think you said it just like that, but that's my interpretation. No, that's a good <laughs> Thank you, Amanda, so much. Thank you, Vic. It's been so much fun. Take yeah, care. for me too. Thank you. Bye-bye.